Welcome to Ladies Wood Shooting School for the seventh part of our shooting time series in association with Hulk Archers on how to become the shot you've always wanted to be. Now we're really in the run up to Christmas here and lots of you will have been shooting a lot since September uh, but the birds are getting a bit stronger and consequently they're getting a bit higher and uh, over the past few weeks I've been out there and really encountering birds that are a bit higher than I expected and, uh, and missing them pretty spectacularly and we might not all be into high bird shooting but we will you know as I've done over the past few weeks encounter birds that are a little bit higher uh, you know than the others on an average day in the field. Uh, so Tom, I was asking you the other day, you know, how much lead do I really need to be giving these birds because I'm missing them? And you were saying, actually, that's not where you should be starting. You should be starting with trying to read a bird on the wing. Is that right? And what do you really mean by that? Yeah, so it's, it's changing people's thinking on the higher bird. When people see a high pheasant, their first thoughts are, oh, it's a long way, it's going to need a lot of lead. Um, I want to change your thinking. I want that the focus to be on actually concentrating on what that bird's doing on the wind, on the wing. Is it sliding? Is it dipping? Is it climbing? Um, focusing on the distances, very, very important when shooting high birds. You know, it's very easy to get carried away and shoot a bird which technically might be out of the ability of the shooter or actually out of shot. And then focusing mainly on the line of the bird and that will hopefully bring a bit more consistency. When I'm sometimes standing there on the peg, I see a bird coming. Often its wings are set, which, uh, you know, as, as you often say when you're instructing people, means that it's really sort of flat out at top speed and it's quite easy to miss behind because when its wings are set, it looks like it can be gliding. Is that, is that right? Uh, it's not so much missing behind. When those wings are set, when they're gliding, they can start to slide. You'll see their tails going, acting like a rudder. Birds will move and move off you, but also they'll be coming down. As soon as those wings are set, they're not climbing. They're, they're le they've levelled up and there'll be some to drop and they will drop at speed. And also when you're on the gun bus uh, after a drive, you know, you might hear one person say, oh, I think those birds are at least 40 yards. And then some other guy will say, uh, you know, I think those were 60 yards. You know, how can you work out sort of how high a bird is? Is that something that just comes from practice or should you be sort of looking at the tops of the trees and trying to work out where those are and then work out where birds are in relation to that? Or what's the, what's the, the knack? Uh, there are various knacks. Um, Getting used to distances, a lot of it is actually actually standing under the birds and understanding the distances, um, working out um, if you're looking at an object at 40 yards, 120 feet. A 40 yard bird's a long way up. Um, you know, and a lot of people come back and sort of be thinking that they've just seen a 70 yard pheasant. You know, a 70 yard pheasant is, a, is, a, is actually a dot in the sky. Um, using trees, understanding drives, looking at banks, uh, there's lots of, lots of things, but a lot of it does actually come down to experience uh, actually in the field. And then you sometimes hear quite experienced shots saying that they like to take uh, high birds on almost as a crosser. That's probably not the case if it's coming right over your head, but when you've got these tight angles, is that something that you would sort of advocate, trying to kind of swing through them like a crosser? If that's the yeah, right I mean, way of... sort of going back to the point about line. Yeah. Because line is key, you know, when those birds are up there, there's no such thing as a straight pheasant. Um, when, they're, when their wings are moving, they are going straight. Once those wings are locked, um, they're gliding, they'll be moving. You can get away with it at 25 yards. Once, once birds get up there, um, they start moving off you at these tight angles. Um, we'll explain as we go through the lesson mm. how we're actually going to sort of, you can actually turn them into crosses to make, make it easier for you to actually uh, pick the bird up. I'm trying to shoot them as a sort of a, a nice straight driven bird, which you can get away with 30, 35, up to 40. Once they're going, you know, starting to get up there and starting to move, uh, it's better to actually start to think, right, I'm going to turn, just to allow your body to actually make the shot correctly. And then um, with cartridge choice, I mean, you get lots of people who will say, oh, well, you know, if you put it in the right place, it will kill it. Personally, this season, I've been using Hull's 32 gram 5 High Pheasant Extreme, which I like because it's a smooth cartridge, but it packs quite a lot of punch. You know, do, you, do you suggest when you get birds that are a little bit high, you should be looking for something like the High Pheasant Extreme, which is both smooth but has knocked down power? I mean, does cartridge really make a difference? Uh, cartridge uh, choice is so important. There's so much investment now done into um, good quality uh, cartridges to actually perform at distance. Um, most important thing to me, shot size. Shot size delivers the lethal blow, the pattern nicely, which the extremes which I use. Yeah. I use the 32 fives all through the season. Um, and they, I find them such a consistent, smooth, hard hitting cartridge. Um, and have absolute complete confidence in, in, in their ability to, to kill birds clean. Okay, shall we uh, have a look at some birds and talk about how to take them on? Okay, so what we're going to go through here now is Patrick's going to have a few shots. So we're going to start with um, a straight bird that's going to be bending off of uh, Patrick's left shoulder. We spoke about line and the importance of picking that bird up nicely and how actually just trying to shoot it like a classic straight bird can actually tie you in knots on a high pheasant that's sliding. So we're going to actually discuss uh, foot movement 
moving his body into a certain position so it allows him to pick the bird up nicely, allows him, his body to, um, to make the shot comfortably, but also, it, most importantly, allows him to pick the line of the bird up uh, a, a, lot, uh, a lot more consistently. I think one of the things, Tom, that I've, um, that I've spoken to you about in the past is that if you move your hand slightly closer towards you, so further towards you down the forehand, it improves your, or rather it speeds up your gun speed, which means you're, you're where you should be in terms of being further ahead of that bird. Is that something that you would... Uh... Yeah, so on your higher pheasant, uh, by just drawing your lead hand in slightly can actually uh, increase your gun speed and actually allow you to... Uh, move the gun slightly more comfortably. If you wanted to slow your gun speed down, uh, move your hand slightly further forward. Um, it all depends on what you feel comfortable with. Uh, when you're and then for people at home, I mean, who are used to having their feet a certain way, when they're taking on higher birds, do they want their feet to be slightly closer together? Because that's something that you hear getting sort of thrown around. Do you agree with that? Or Having your feet slightly closer together, I I'm one for having my feet close together. The reason being that I only have to then make small movements yeah. to really increase my, my body movement <clears throat> effectively for certain angles. Having your feet too wide apart means you have to make you know, uh, exaggerated movements when you're, uh, when you're shooting and you could end up sort of going around in circles, getting um, confused. You just want small movements to allow your body uh, to get yourself effectively into the right position to shoot the bird that you've picked. Okay, fantastic. Can we have a yeah. look at a few? a little bit later. You know, the classic two shots there, nice first shot, very controlled. Then you'll see Patrick just start to speed the gun up and panic a bit. For some reason, you do see it quite a lot in the field. A high bird doesn't mean you move faster, okay? Um, and you saw that demonstrated on Patrick's second shot, so he lost control of the shot. <clears throat> So now for that tight angle, going against your natural body swing, the left to right for the uh, right hander. Patrick's going to demonstrate, he's just going to turn nicely, hold the muzzles. You'll see your bird curling off your, um, off your right shoulder. Okay, here it comes. Nice shot. Watch the bird die. So as we've explained, talking about the importance of line, knowing your distances and actually shooting high pheasants and using your body, moving your feet correctly. Just quickly to demonstrate, I'll do it right-handed, as we've discussed with Patrick, in the shots. Okay, once you've gone past that sort of nice normal 40-yard straight bird, shooting it classically, as soon as that bird starts to move off your left or right shoulder, you've got to start thinking about turning. Okay, the importance of your footwork turning for that right to left, demonstrating um, right-handed. I can see a bird curling uh, off my left shoulder. I've turned myself nicely, I've come in, picking the bird up, you turn right shoulder down, so your shoulders are parallel, eyesight's parallel, gun's parallel through the line of the bird, which is absolutely key, and then watch the bird die as you make the shot. Again, for your left to right, so as a right-hander, going against your natural body swing. All right, again, footwork, you've watched your bird very carefully, curling off to the right, you made the decision, you know where you want to kill it, you turn yourself up, hold your muzzles correctly, okay, and now you're actually gonna push into the back of the bird, turn your left shoulder down, okay, so your shoulders are parallel, Eyesight's parallel, gun's parallel, as you come through that bird again, watching the bird die. So as you'll have seen, the weather was absolutely horrendous out there today. Uh, so we moved inside at Ladies Wood, um, and we were looking at, of course, high birds today. And you know that when the season progresses and the birds get stronger, they get higher. We can all get a bit phased by it, but I hope that what we've looked at today in terms of footwork and when to decide to take it as a crosser rather than a straight oncomer, you know, will give you the confidence to, uh, to go out there and shoot to the best of your ability. Yeah, I mean, high bird shooting is not easy. You're not going to shoot spectacular averages, so don't let that become a major thought. Focus on what we spoke about with regards to focus on what the bird's doing on the wing. Concentrate on um, the line of the bird, which is absolutely key. Um, think about your style, your technique, as Patrick said about sort of whether you're going to turn it into a crosser or take it on as a sort of traditional straight bird. Um, and shoot with confidence, but shoot within your ability and understand your distances. So from all of us at Shooting Times and the team at Hull Cartridge, uh, we hope you're going to have a fantastic Christmas and that you've got lots of shooting lined up over the festive period. And we hope that you've also found the, uh, the series very useful and that it'll help you improve your shooting. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed the, uh, the series, um, everyone. 
Um, enjoy the festive period, enjoy the rest of the season, um, and a very happy Christmas.